the question is in an examination a student can choose the order in which two questions in bracket question a and question b must be attempted if the first question is answered wrong comma the student gets zero marks if the first question is answered correctly and the second question is not answered correctly comma the student gets the marks only for the first question if both the questions are answered correctly comma the student gets the sum of the marks of the two questions the following table shows the probability of correctly answering the question and the marks of the question respectively question probability of answering correctly marks table given question a probability 0.8 marks 10 question b probability 0.5 marks 20 assuming that the student always wants to maximize their expected marks in the examination comma in which order should she attempt the questions and what is the expected marks for the order assume that the questions are independent a b c d four statements given uh, a first question b and then question a expected marks 22 related b c d given this question is from engineering mathematics from the topic probability and statistics sub topic random variables average the solution is so take care of the table. So question A, he can attempt first, then question B, or question B first, then question A. So there are two cases to find expected uh, marks maximized we are considering, and in which order they they will get the maximum expected marks. So let us denote the random variable X with the total marks and p of x is the probability so what is the total marks means if the first question is wrong whether by a first or b first that means let us take both are wrong then the total marks zero if a correct that is a is attempting correct first and b is attempting wrong so then the total marks for that case is 10 now if the question b first then question a b correct a wrong then the total marks is 20. If both are correct in any order, that is question A first, question B second. Similarly, question B first, then question A second, but both are correct, then the total marks is 30 marks. So I am going to do the next slide. Solution. Let X capital X be a random variable you know total mode and P of X is the probability of those marks then this is the table capital X is equal to small x p of x zero 10, 20, 30. So, for getting 0 means A, B, wrong. That is the meaning. For getting 10 means correct, B wrong. For getting 20 means He is attempting first, correct, A is next, wrong. So here both are correct. In whatever order, both correct. 10 plus 20, 30. 
so getting zero so whatever it may be a wrong b wrong a is attempting correct answer is 0.8 so get attempting wrong answer 0.2 he is given uh, in the previous slide see b is given answering correct 0.5 so he uh, the question b she attempted answering wrongly is also 0.5 okay 0.2 into 0.5 this is which is giving 0.1 for this 10 uh, question a correct question b wrong question a correct is 0.8 and question b wrong 0.5 this simplifies to 0.4 refer the question 20 marks means e correct first then a wrong so e correct means 0.5 a wrong means 0.2 simplifies to 0.1 so here a correct, both are correct. Let us take A first, B second. Or whatever, B first, A second. Whatever it may be. So, A correct, answering, uh, that is 0.8. B is also correct, that is question B also correct, answering 0.5. So, which is simplified to 0.4. So, from this, sum of all the properties, this is a discrete random variable, X is a summation taken over all X values. P of x is equal to 0 0.1 plus 0 0.4 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.4 is equal to 1. So here this x is discrete random variable. Rv means random variables. Okay. Now two cases. Case one. First question A, then question B. Okay, this is the case we are considering. So they are asking, do you remember the question? Expected marks. Okay, expected marks, that is expectation means average, E of X, implies expected marks is nothing but E of X, because discrete random variable, operator is summation, taken over all X values, this X into E of X, X value 0 into 0 0.1, Property next 10 into so first question A, then question B. So 0 and 10 marks we should consider into its probability 0 0.4 and maybe both are correct in this that is uh, 30 into 0. Point. So this simplifies to 4 plus 12. 60. Now, case. So, whenever first question A attempting, then the favorable cases for marks 0, 10, 30. Case. First question B. Then question A. So in this case, expected marks. E. E of X is equal to summation taken over all X values. P of X. Again, for favorable cases, first question B, then question A is 0, 20, 30. 0 into 0 0.1 plus 20 marks into 0 0.1 plus 30 marks into 0. This simplifies to 2 plus 12 is equal to 14. So, case 1, 16 marks. Case 2, 14 marks. 
So, therefore, case one giving maximum expected marks. So, question one, first that means question A first, question B second, expected marks is 16. Please remember options. So, option A ruled out, option B ruled out, first question A, then question B. Okay, that is the answer is 16. So, please check. First question A, then question B, expected marks is 6. So, accordingly, the option is B. Therefore, Option is B. So, uh, answer is accordingly option B. That means question A first attempted correct, question B attempted wrong. That is here the tick is correct, the input mark is wrong. Take care. This is very, very important and tough question also. So, this is end of the question. The question is suppose that F R to R is a continuous function on the interval, closed interval minus 3 comma 3 and a differentiable function in the interval, open interval minus 3 comma 3 such that for every x in the interval comma f dash x less than or equal to 2. If f of minus 3 is equal to 7, then f of 3 is at most. This question is from engineering mathematics. From the topic, calculus, subtopic, mean value terms, solution is. So, here that is the condition function f of x is continuous in closed interval a comma b, differentiable in open interval a comma b. These are the two common conditions in mean value terms. And first derivative less than or equal to 3, function value at minus 3 is equal to 7. Usually, closed interval a comma b is here minus 3 comma plus 3. So, solution is. By Lagrange's, because we don't know fx value, we cannot say f of a is equal to f of b or not. But the two conditions of Lagrange's mean value theorem here satisfied that is continuous in closed interval a b and differentiable in open interval a b. So that's why I'm using Lagrange's mean value theorem in of rules mean value theorem. Lagrange's mean value theorem. F dash x equal to f of b minus f of a whole divided by 3 minus of 3, b minus a, where this x is a point or belongs to open interval minus 3, comma 3. So, f of 3 is how much? It is not given. We are going to find f of minus 3 is 7 given. So, f of 3 minus 7, 3 minus of minus 3 simplifies to 6. Since f dash x less than or equal to 2, therefore, f of 3, this is equation 1. So, f dash x value here substitute f of 3 minus 7 divided by 6 less than or equal to 2. 6 into 2, 12, 12 plus 7, 19. So, f of 3 less than or equal to 19. That means, f of 3 value 19 or 18 or less than 19 means 18.1 or 17, etc. So, at most means maximum that is 19. Therefore, f of 3 is at most 19. So, the answer is 19. This is the end of the question. The question is, for two n-dimensional real vectors p and q, comma, the operation s of p, comma, q is defined as follows. s of p, comma, q is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to n, p of i dot q of i. Let L be a set of 10-dimensional non-zero real vectors such that for every 
pair of distinct vectors p comma q belongs to l comma s of p comma q is equal to zero. What is the maximum cardinality possible for the set L? Four options A, B, C, D given. This question is from engineering mathematics. From the topic linear algebra basics, year two thousand twenty-one. The solution is. So here, s of p comma q is given as sum of the products of the corresponding vector. That is, not product of two vectors. S of p comma q. The solution. Clearly, s of P comma Q is equal to summation I is equal to one to n P bracket I dot Q bracket I is the dot product of two vectors. P and Q. Given L is a set of ten-dimensional yes, spelling dimensional their cardinality. L is a set of ten dimensional. Ten dimensional means every vector containing ten components. For example, two dimensional vectors, one comma two. That is coordinate geometry two D representation. X comma Y three D representation. X Y Z. Here are ten dimensional vectors. Ten dimensional non-zero. That is, each vector is non-zero vector. Real vector means all the components, all the elements of ten-dimensional vector. Each ten-dimensional vector are real numbers. Real vectors such that small s t means such that every pair of distinct vectors. P comma Q belongs to L comma S of P comma Q is equal to zero. So that means dot product is zero. Implies P and Q are orthogonal vectors. implies p comma q are linearly independent vectors the set of orthogonal vectors are always linearly independent please remember this is a property from the basics matrices vector algebra linear algebra chapter a set of orthogonal vectors non zero vectors is always linearly independent so that means implies whenever you are going to take two distinct vectors in the set l which is containing ten dimensional vectors the dot product is zero okay so and we remember an nth dimensional n dimensional Vectors that of n-dimensional vectors 
set of all n dimensional vectors never contain more than n linearly independent vectors that is very very important property from vector algebra that means uh, vector spaces linear algebra topic so here real is real that means l is the set of non zero orthogonal vectors vectors are distinct so every pair of distinct vectors that is already l is a set a set never containing the repeated element so automatically l is the set of non zero orthogonal vectors so that means the vectors in l are linearly independent l i stands for linearly independent we know that a n dimensional means all vectors never contain more than n linearly independent vectors so here l is a set of 10 dimensional non zero real vectors given that means that uh, don't it doesn't mean that l containing only 10 vectors it is containing so many vectors but each vector is a 10 dimensional and we proved all these uh, that means Uh, l is a set of non zero orthogonal vectors if the vectors are distinct that means the vectors in l are linearly independent if vectors are distinct distinct means different and this is a vector space property from linear algebra we know that an n dimensional set of all vectors never containing more than n linearly independent vectors that is implies cardinality that is cardinal cardinality means the number of elements in a set cardinality l is less than or equal to 10 hence maximum is 10 no? maximum cardinality possible for l is 10 so the answer is 10 accordingly option is this is end of the question the question is suppose that p is a 4 cross 5 real matrix sorry matrix p is a 4 cross 5 matrix such that every solution of the equation px is equal to 0 is a scalar multiple of uh, row transpose matrix that is 2 5 4 3 1 transpose the rank of p is 
This question is from engineering mathematics from the topic linear algebra subtopic solutions that is homogeneous non homogeneous equations and then uh, linearly independent solutions etc solution p is 4 cross 5 matrix okay mat means matrix px is equal to 0 is homogeneous system for which every solution that is X capital X is a KLR multiple of two, five, four, three, one row matrix transpose. So this is non zero solution. Okay, so therefore x is non zero, and we know that non zero solutions are infinite, non zero solutions are infinitely many. And the relation between all the solution looks like a scalar multiple of uh, column vector 2, 5, 4, 3, 1 because it is given in the question. Since every solution is a scalar multiple of column vector 2, 5, 4, 3, 1 implies every solution is of the form lambda i 2, 5, 4, 3, 1 this lambda i is scalar so, when two solutions are two vectors linearly dependent, one is a scalar multiple of other. So, here every solution is a scalar multiple means the number of linear independent solutions. Therefore, the number of linearly independent Solutions of the homogeneous system Px is equal to 0 is 1. We have a ready made formula for finding number of linear independent solutions is n minus r is equal to 1, where n is number of variables, r is rank of the matrix, coefficient matrix, rank. So n is number of variables. So how it is number of variables? P is multiplying with x. So P is a 4 cross 5 matrix that is 4 rows, 5 columns. Each row containing 5 elements which is multiplied by x. So x is a and x is of order compulsory 5 cross 5. Because each row containing each row of a matrix P having 5 elements. So it must having 5 elements in a column. Solution is a column vector. Okay. So that is 5 cross 1. So uh, that means solution containing number of variables also. That means n is equal to 5 minus r is equal to 1 implies r is equal to 5 minus 1, 4. So, is the rank of p. Okay. So, here x is a 
contains the number of unknowns. Pi cross one matrix is five unknowns automatically. So the answer is four. This is end of the question. The question is for a given biased coin, the probability that the outcome of a toss is a head is 0.4. This coin is tossed a thousand times. Let x denote the random variable whose value is the number of times that had appeared in these thousand tosses. The standard deviation of x rounded to two decimal places is. This question is from engineering mathematics from the topic probability and statistics, subtopic distributions, random variables. So here bias. So probability of outcome is head is given 0 0.4. So automatically probability that outcome is tail is 1 minus 0 0.4 that is 0 0.6. It is tossed a thousand times. This is n is equal to thousand times. Now x denote random variable number of times that head appears in this thousand process. They are asking standard deviation of x. Now solution let small p is equal to probability of outcome of a toss is head is given 0 0.4. U is nothing but probability of outcome is tail. It is nothing but 1 minus p is equal to 0 0.6 and n is equal to 1000 number of independent trials 1000 tosses. Okay. So x is already random variable given. So here p is not small. But here n very large. If n is very large, p is very small, then only apply Poisson distribution, otherwise binomial distribution. So clearly x follows binomial distribution. Okay, so that is x denote the random variable number of n that had appeared in this thousand process already given. So we know that standard deviation. So this is a random variable. Denote number of times that had appeared in these thousand tosses. Standard deviation of binomial distribution, that is BD is the full form binomial distribution, is square root of n into p into q, which is nothing but square root of thousand into 0 0.4 into 0 0.6. So this is equal to 240 under root. That is square root of 240. Approximately, they are asking up to two decimal places. So 15.49 decimal places. So the answer is 15.49. This is the end of the question.